I'm Kamal from Principal Engineer from Cisco Systems. What we're going to cover today is how next-gen sand fabric is going to handle NVMe transport traffic. We're going to go in details about the fiber channel NVMe uh, transport options from Cisco. We're going to do a live demo uh, on the fiber channel NVMe analytics in there. And then after the first half, you know, we're going to talk about uh, NVMe fabric for the Ethernet world, right? Rocky and TCP. And then we're going to conclude with the actual uh, verified designs from Cisco, what we are producing and how we're testing and how we're documenting all this thing. So if you look at uh, uh, the SAN has been evolving over the years, right? Back in 1994, Fiber Channel was designed just specifically to do the SCSI protocol mapping in there. It simplified the architecture. Then later on, you know, other transport options started to appear, iSCSI, and then IBM guys mapped the uh, SCON, FICON into the fiber channel transport. RDMA got mapped into it. And then, you know, of course, the iSCSI took over the Rocky and the IWAP in there also. And then again, back in 2009, when FCOE started to become popular, Cisco with their 5K productized FCOE, pretty popular, and we unified the fiber channel and ethernet to the uh, top of the rack switch. Now, <clears throat> as... Ethernet, as the flash started to appear in the storage world, people were not getting the same performance on it. And, you know, I'm showing you a lot of diagrams over here, a lot of numbers over there. I'm building you a story. So if you just follow along with the story, some of the dates may be a little bit off and on, but, you know, just, just look good at the story here. So the flash, which is running on the storage because it's the SCSI SAS based, were not that fast in terms of the performance. So something has to be done. So back in 2013, NVMe consortium started to spec to show that how they can replace the SCSI commands with the NVMe commands and make that spa a flash much faster. So the backend, you know, flash got replaced with NVMe uh, a flash. They call it like a PCIe flash, and you. You know, you can see that the SCSI had the single queue uh, with the, so that way the, at that time uh, with the SAS3, you had 12 gig uh, bit, bits per second uh, performance. But with NVMe, which today it's at, uh, you know, PCI 4.0, SSDs are available, it's a 16 gig per lane, you know, so you can do four lane, usually SSD, so you can get much better performance in there. In the front end, now the industry started to do how we're gonna do the transporting the NVMe also. So, you know, fiber channel mapping was done. And then in 2018, TCP mapping came up also. So what we are calling is, and also the back end clustering, you know, which was the SAS interconnects. Now it's going on to the even NVMe technologies there also. Now, if you look at where this, all these protocols are there, right? So there is a mainframe guys with the FICONs, there is a, uh, SAS hard disk drives. There's now this NVMe fabrics come into the picture. So all these storage protocols will continue to exist for the customers. And, you know, if I dig deeper inside, Cisco is going to be su is supporting today all of these protocols in there, right? We have the MDS products line, and then we have an Nexus 9000 product line, which supports all of these protocols. And this is, uh, you know, if I had a crystal ball, <laughs> I will say that, uh, you know, mainframe guys, which they have their own, uh, you know, uh, byte commands with their SBB, SBC, and then the CKD writing the disk, they're gonna continue to utilize the fiber channel transport for their ZOS operating system emulated in there for the storage world. The hard drive is gonna continue to be there. I mean, there's a, I think uh, over 50% of the disks are still uh, are disks versus flash, right? But it's rapidly flashes is catching up as the prices starts to go down with QLC and other technologies coming into the picture. So, but the SAS drives will be still there, right? So SCSI uh, FCP will be continue. And with NVMe now, we'll slowly start to catch on on the all flash arrays. And this is where the fiber channel we will utilize in the first iteration of this thing. Different options in there. You have a fiber channel. As I said, there's a large install base of fiber channel. NVMe will give you faster access. You know, we did a quick test over there. Fiber channel NVMe, you know, gives you better performance as you get above 600 KI ops in there. If you look at the other transport options, there's InfiniBand, there is a Rocky, and then there's a TCP in there also. InfiniBand, uh, you know, as in the Rocky mapped into the UDP, uh, so one has to figure it out a little bit more, dig deeper for the troubleshooting. As I'm looking at one of the trays in there, it's a UDP Rocky packet, but there's a whole transport header of InfiniBand inside it, right? So it does give you better performance. And we ran a quick test, very quick test we ran, and on, on, without tuning anything in there, just to see how it lays out. 
there's definitely a mind-boggling performance improvement from iSCSI TCP to the NVMe Rocky. So, so I'm anticipating, we're thinking that all those iSCSI customers will be trying later on some of these uh, you know, Rocky or TCP implementations of NVMe. While in the meantime, the enterprise storage guys are racing towards providing end-to-end -end NVMe storage. That means the backend is already SSD and the front end they're providing with the NVMe Rocky. So the question is, what protocol should you pick? Well, Cisco is telling you, all these protocols will be relevant. You know, your traditional fiber channel, you can move on to NVMe fiber channel. It's the same. There is no changes required. And then, you know, as you experiment with the high performance Rocky or down the line scalability TCP, we are the only vendor, single vendor solution. We have the switches that can provide you and all this thing. Let me quickly jump into the fiber channel and I'll take your questions right after that, you know, very fast. So if you look at the solutions in the fiber channel world. So, well, back in those days, you know, the MDS got launched and then server had an HBA adapter and the ethernet adapter and then unified computing came into the picture. We took the FCOE, put it in the UCS server. It was 95K switch at that time. So we simplified the number of the adapter that goes in there. Now, and the whole industry got born out of this converged infrastructure, right? Vblog guys got on and then everybody else jumped into this thing. And there's a huge market, verified design, physical infrastructure, converged infrastructure, right? And then, you know, how are we switching the fiber channel packets and what does it make difference with NVMe fiber channel? Uh, it is the same infrastructure, but as you go to the higher speed, why MDS architecture is required? You know, just to refresh your knowledge in there, MDS is a crossbar based architecture. Crossbar based means that as the packet comes into the back plane, uh, we have a, a very high speed crossbar. This way it is very scalable. In fact, we have productized it up to 16 line cards. We are the world's biggest, most dense fiber channel director in there. Uh, you know, everybody does have a zero drops in fiber channel, but we go with the arc, this uh, crossbar architecture by putting uh, a central arbitration in it. What we can do is we can provide the latency among all ports fairness. And then also we allow no congestion. We congestion-free backplane in there, right? It's an investment protection architecture with crossbar and central arbitration. You know, we launched 16 gig in 2013, you know, in uh, uh, 17, uh, you know, in 2017, 32 gig. And then once we, you know, prioritize the 64 gig very soon, you know, uh, it will be the same chassis. That's the point in here. So customers don't have to replace the chassis from all the way from 16 gig to 64 gig. And if 64 gigs has a leg for another three years and so forth, uh, you know, it's going to come out this year, early next year. Uh, then it means that over 10 years, the same chassis has carried out our customers in there. So a lot of benefits in there, uh, you know, the uh, fairness, you know, the high availability modular architecture in there. So what else can we do in fiber channel? Can you, can you explain a little bit more who your customers are for this architecture? Yes, the people, as you talk about different, you know, VBlock, uh, FlexPod, and all these different architectures, there's already a where a lot of materials available. And Chris is going to talk about later at the end of the presentation, what we are doing with NVMe, Rocky, with the, with NetApps and Clear and all those uh, customers and the forwarding things. So uh, in sand switching, what we took is that we took the fiber channel. What can we do? Maybe we can put the fiber channel leaf in the 9K switch, of Nexus 9K, which is an IP switch. So we move the FCF forwarding into the 9K uh, uh, architecture. So that means you can have just the spines and then you can move up. Uh, then again, you can even connect your NVMe fiber channel this directly to an IP switch for a smaller scale. Maybe that makes sense in there, right? And then, you know, there's a SAN insight. We're gonna give you a live demo about it is, but let me walk you through quickly inside what it is. What it is that inside the MDS architecture, and I'm showing you with a single ASIC architecture, there are three ASICs and there are 32 gig. There's a couple of crossbars sitting on the line cards and central arbitration, and then there's an NPU. Let me walk you through a packet walk, how we do the SAN insights, why the NVMe analytics, we tap right inside the architecture. And we've been doing this since 2017 with the 32 gig line card, right? As the fiber channel packet comes inside the ASIC, we look through the forwarding engine in there, we have a, a very centralized arbitration architecture. So we put it in a VOQ that makes it a total non-blocking architecture. We go into the backplane fairness among all, any one of the crossbar can go die. No problem, it's high availability for all the line cards. We come out on the egress side of it. It could be different line card. I'm just showing you on the same ASIC for in this demo. And then we push the packet out. So our ASIC hardware engineer thought about this and they said, voila, what is going on here? We can tap these packets 
the SCSI packets, you know, if you have to do analytics today, I mean, you know, without Cisco, maybe you will need an external optical tap to tap the traffic, or maybe you can span out, span, you know, gets really cumbersome at, at a high speed and all that, right, number of ports. So what we did, we actually put a physical tap, just like an optical tap outside on the link. We put the tap on the ASIC itself. And then within the ASIC architecture, what we can do is we can map whatever OXID and fiber channel flows are going in. We can, we can trigger on certain flows and then we can create an ethernet header inside and ship that packet over the ethernet to the online card NPU for the processing of the analytics in there. So every line card has a dedicated NPU, every line card ASIC, there are three of them in there for 32 gig, which has the, this analytics tapping built inside the ASIC in there. And then from these, every line card NPU, we can take all the line cards and into the central supervisor and push this data outside on the external collector. So we build this in the DCNM, an external collector called SAN Insights. It will take the data in there, GRPC, whatever the information is. We have a data store in there, and then we'll create some presentation. We'll look at the data, and then we'll present the information to the customers. And this is exactly where Paresh is gonna come in in a second and give you a live demo. Tons of metrics information we can give you live on NVMe fiber channel, on SCSI fiber channel, and all this, every packet, it's not a sample, it's not an S-flow, it's not a NetFlow, it's not a span. It's every packet is tapped inside the ASIC without any CPU help, is shipped out from the ASIC utilizing the Ethernet uh, uh, UDP packet, right, and built inside the ASIC, out to the NPU and out to the centralized supervisor and out to the uh, D, uh, DC, uh, DCNM uh, SAN collector in there. As far as IOPS are concerned, are, they, are these like read IOPS? They're, sing yeah. they're four kilobyte random reads, one gigabyte with a single volume. Yes, yes. So let me give you that. I think I went through the slide quickly. I will make the slides available also. So this was like for example for the IP uh, testing what we did, we did it uh, on the UCS server with 100 gig line cards, and we went up to 20 different UCS servers, and with a single volume and 4K uh, random reads, and we transferred like one gigabytes of the information quickly to see how fast it can go in through the uh, and the storage at that time we used Pavilion data it had all different protocols supported right there. So single volume, we were able to get pretty substantial IOPS. And in fact, we even jumped all the way the IOPS number to above 20 million on that pavilion box. And our our 9K switches in the middle were able to handle all the buffering and uh, without the doing any- so, so, so the chart shows like up like 850,000 um, kinds of numbers yeah. here for IOPS. Um, I just, the question between the TCP and Iraqi V2, the latency looks to be what? Almost half? Yeah, if you look at the, the end, when you do the Rocky, the couple of things come into the play. One is that the whole Rocky transport header is offloaded on the NIC card itself. So all the infinity band and transmissions are being, all the optimizations done at the NIC. Second, it's an RDMA, so we're bypassing a lot of the kernels. And third, with NVMe, with the multi-queue, we use 64 core UCS. So each core gets mapped into its own soft queue within the block MQ, and then also down to the hardware MQ, you know, with the SQCQ pairs on the NVMe, it also gets one-on-one -on -one mapping in there. And then, you know, we can talk more about this in the, in the, in the session, you know, with, which is a Q&A. Yeah. Uh, Kamal, I have a question as well. Uh, yes. So you, you're talking about MDS and uh, you know other switches or other other products that you have uh, in in the field. What do you see about NVMe over fabric adoption? I mean, is yes. it more FC or it's more Ethernet based? Oh yeah, yeah. So so exactly. If you look at today, so where is the NVMe fiber channel? It's the first uh, transport protocol NVMe OF that came out along with RDMA, right? So back in 2016. So any customer, all our traditional customers, all our installed base with the fiber channel with our MDS product line, without changing anything on the transport piece of it, they can take advantage of NVMe fiber channel. They just have to get the driver properly done on the host and the storage uh, vendor has to support on the array piece of it, NVMe fiber channel. So in the middle, from the switching perspective, there's no change in there, right? Now, as far as the whether people are jumping onto NVMe fiber channel or not right away, because the fiber channel is a zero copy architecture right from the beginning with the SCSI world also adapters, just like RDMA, they have a zero copy in there. So CPU utilization is low anyway. So the multi-queue does help a little bit between the SCSI fiber channel and NVMe fiber channel, 
but the response time, you know, the CPU utilization doesn't go very much high within the NVMe FC. The benefit comes is when you come into the storage array, you know, that's where the multi-mapping of this, the flash comes into the picture, NVM is much faster. How does the tail latencies are lower in there, the garbage collection and all those, every vendor of the storage and array puts some kind of a optimization with the memory in there. So for example, when you're doing a write to it, it can write to the memory and they can write later on and so forth in there, right? So we have also on, on IP world, uh, you know, it is very new right now. And we see that uh, all the traditional banking and everything on the fiber channel will continue on that. And in an IP world for certain high workload optimization things like high workload, uh, uh, you know, analytics, something people will start using NVMe Rocky below the rack, top of the rack. And then once NVMe TCP comes into the place that will change the game for at least it will start to create like a private uh, clouds on your data center, the scalable, because you can spin off quickly a uh, disk with the disaggregated storage coming into the play.